Hi, welcome to the Spirit of 76 Museum. I'm Becky Norton, and I'm with Jenny Arntz, who is the director of Main Street Wellington. Um, I happen to be a board member here at the Spirit of 76 Museum, and we thought it would be nice to have a few videos of some of the things in the museum. Right now, we are standing next to an old-fashioned medicine cabinet, which probably would not have had all of these things in it, but this is a way that we could display the things that we do have. Um, this is a pestle and mortar, which they would put herbs and things in here and then use this to grind them down because they didn't have any mechanical things that they could do that with. These are some of the bottles here that medicines might have come in, and here's some of the different medicines that um, the containers, the little bottles and the, and the little tins that they had. This object right here is an interesting thing. It's a vaporizer. So some of your moms may have rubbed a Vicks on you <laughs> or put Vicks in some water <laughs> and heated it up and you may had to sit with a, a towel over your head and breathe it to get congestion out. Well, this is a miniature version and they would have put the medicine in the top and then um, heated it up. As you can see that there's a little well here for oil, lamp oil, they would have heated it up and then you would have breathed in the vapors. Hmm. This is a scale that they would have used to get the right proportions of the medicines involved. One of the reasons why we're here is because I have a story about Wellington from 1926. In 1926, typhoid, which was a deadly disease, hit Wellington. And it hit so hard that 155 people became ill with typhoid. Now, with everything that's going on in today's times, 155 might not seem like a lot, but you have to remember that the population of Wellington in 1926 was not as large as it is today. 15 people died, and they needed to find the source of the contamination. Typhoid strikes when the typhoid germs contaminate, and usually it's passed like through water, liquids, food, things that you've touched. Maybe if somebody picked lettuce that has the typhoid and you eat it, then you would get the typhoid fever. Since they could not find what the contamination was, they cleaned out the sewer system and sanitized it. If you were ill, your whole entire family was quarantined at home. Sound familiar? And then um, they closed the schools, they closed the churches. This struck in August and it lasted through November. Finally, they found the source of the typhoid. There was a gentleman who was a herdsman at a dairy, a big outstanding dairy in Wellington, and he handled the milk. He helped to milk the cows, and of course you did it by hand. You dumped the milk into the milk cans and you carried it, so you, you handled the milk. He did not know that he was a carrier of typhoid. He had had typhoid at one time, got over it, recovered from it, but he carried the germs with him. Finally found out that that was the source of the typhoid. Because of that, now in Wellington and throughout the state of Ohio, and in fact throughout the whole United States, milk must be pasteurized. At that time, it did not need to be heated up. You could milk the cow, cool out down the milk, and sell it to whomever, and that's called raw milk. Now, because of the typhoid, it has to be heated up so that the germs are killed in it, and then it's germ-free, it's bottled in, in um, germ-free bottles, and the milk that you drink in the from the stores is very, very safe.